beers and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Wop, bop, loop, bop, bam, bamboo. I know I, we did that uh, on a past episode because we thought we were going to get to it, but... We're two guys, and we were discussing basketball, and uh, we ended up going all four quarters with a little bit of overtime. Uh, but we're here now. Uh, little Richard, folks, uh, you can check it out on HBO Max, I believe. You could download it on Amazon Prime, and I think CNN. Uh, it, it's going to be for Labor Day, and you're right. This is the one. That yeah, is. CNN is releasing it. Uh, I can't believe there has not been a major biographical film made on this dude. They did of, a little Richard, I thought. No. Of all the interesting people that we've seen movies on, a la James Brown, Red, uh, 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 whoa, Ray Charles. <laughs> I couldn't think of him until I did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ali, Foreman, and some people I don't know that I needed to see one on, like Whitney Houston. But this guy is a character. The stories, the, the, the time he came up, what he means and what he meant to rock and roll. As he said, I'm the originator, the architect, the creator, baby. Shut up. Who? Uh, just the, 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 the gravity of who he was and at the time he was it. Uh, this seems like a movie that should have been done, but maybe the irony is part of the theme in this is that he never got his just due. He certainly felt that way. A lot of other people felt that way. So maybe that's why we haven't seen the movie. Well, yeah, I think I, I, I think a lot of people feel that way. Honestly, I don't understand either. That's why I can't believe one hasn't been made, but I'm going to go with you on it until I look it up. Um. Uh, you said something interesting when I asked you, because uh, when I watched it, as it was going from beginning to end, there were several moments where I went, oh, shit, Andy's going to like this. And then when I asked you, to my surprise, you weren't head over heels. It wasn't that I was head over, it wasn't head over heels. I mean, we're talking about a man that is so accomplished, had so much happen in his life. And the whole, it, it, there is a lot of focus on him being just on being gay. And there's nothing wrong with, with that. I don't have, but the focus, I, I, how many ways can you say that he was gay? But that seemed like a necessary focus because it tied into a lot of it, it did <clears throat> his history and his story and things that you needed to know. It did, but it was, you know, that's, that is who you, that's who he is. But the the story of him is it, it it just kept going back that way, and I wanted more story about him. Uh, and I know that is part of who he is. But let, let me let let's do let's do a, a thing where me and you just talk about being straight. And I know it's different because it's not the majority, and it doesn't get as much attention. But you, you there is other accomplishments in this, and I know that it weaves in. But it's how they weaved it in. It, but it but was, I think here's where you're not giving its its due diligence and why it's important. Because had he only been black and straight, his road to greatness would have still been what it was in terms of tough. Yeah. But now throw gay into that. No, I I understand that. But but some of the accomplishments. Oh, okay. Here's here's one of the things when they said. Uh, you know, because of because of Richard, I had permission. And this is one of the things. And this this is going to sound extremely white. And I know it is. He did. Little Richard didn't need permission. Why is everybody said he gave me? You don't get permission. Here's when you what you say. It, refresh me. Who they gave me permission. Who? I, I don't even remember who said, but someone said little Richard gave me permission to. Oh, be. I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but get Billy Porter. OK, you don't get. But little Richard didn't get permission. It's it's not whether it's not about the permission. You have to be able to take the beating to be I, the first. I know, but I think what you might be undermining in terms of the significance is 
like with everything, somebody has to take the first step. Right. And when somebody takes the first brave, hard step, it serves as uh, it, m- motivation or uh, what's that other word? I'm it opens for? the door. It to inspires. Yeah. It, to, to, There's to, inspiration. I, yes. I, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying. I, I but some people do need permission. I don't know if those were the right words he should have used, but he, I, what he's saying ultimately is, you know, he gave me the courage. That that I would appreciate it. If he would have said if he, he gave me the courage to step out of my the darkness that follows my life because I I I I, I, I was always had to be hidden. Something like that, I would have gone. Okay, that makes sense to me. When you say gave me permission, permission, permission's granted, but you have to be willing to take the abuse. All right. There, there, there's nothing saying anyone can't do it. You got to be willing to take the abuse for what you want, what you want to break through. And that happens with, 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 I I just think, you know what it was? I'll tell you what it is. I know exactly what it is right now. It, 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 there was a lot of these cliche kind of verbiage that was throughout this whole thing that made me go, Oh, they're they're saying that again, this is being said again. And it had nothing to do just necessarily even with uh, the topic of his his, uh, lifestyle or anything. It's just when you hear people really reiterate the same, reiterate, thank you. The same uh, cliche talking points. I I was like, you guys can do better. You know, when you, for instance, Billy Porter has been through a lot. And he's in, he's very God mother. Yeah, and he's, he's at a different level now that he has a space to provide and to talk, but then to say, but then to come up and say, uh, permission, uh, uh, you know, he gave me permission. It's a, it's a cliche statement, but come he, up with something I, original. I, I, but you know, listen, you, you're, listen. you're in a place, uh, uh, you're in a place that you're standing out. Be original. That's the whole point of this is to be an original, you know, gay men have to permission on it. It, it, there's some flair on that. There's some, he didn't have there's any some fl- gay paprika he didn't, on no, that. No, no, he doesn't put any flair on it. No, no, no I don't mean he, he put flair on it, but to, to, to dramatic. What I'm saying be dramatic. is we're talking about one of the most ins- inspirational, original people in, a, in that's been around ever. Right. And I'm giving that to him. Little Richard is, and he's one of those people that has inspired millions. That That's a cliche moment, what I just said, inspired millions. So what I'm looking for, for the people that he inspired, though, is to say something that's not cliche and to say something that's bigger, better. Make me invest my time into listening to what you're going to say instead of saying something that people have said over and over and over again. That, I guess, is the better way for me to say it. Be original. You're an artist, Billy Porter. Say something different. Um... Before we get too deep into Little Richard, here's something that blew my mind. That's funny. Oh, right. Uh, here's something that blew my mind. Because there's always, and, I, and, I, and listen, I, I believe that it's always been made to believe that the further you go back in time, we as human beings were more conservative. We weren't as yeah. out and nasty and wild and it ain't it wasn't a free-for-all in terms of sexuality and drugs and everything like it is now which i'm i'm thinking in some ways is true but in some ways it's a myth when they showed the singer and they were talking about uh certain places where little richard would go hang out where at, at, at after hours you know you would see guys in drag where this was so taboo and even illegal, you know, homosexuality, displays of homosexuality. But they played a, 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 they were talking about the Chitlin Circuit, and one of the artists that they worked with was a singer by the name of Lucille Bogan. Here are the lyrics to her song. I got nipples on my titties, big as my thumb. I got something between my legs, make a dead man come. What? They were do they were doing that shit? I got nipples as big as my thumb. I got shit between my legs, make a dead man come. Well, I'll be damned. Uh, it's always been hidden. Like people have done this for us. Uh, people hide who they really are. This is who we really are. Well, I'll tell you why, Andy. Sure, the niggas have to hide, but never the white folks. We did what we wanted to do out in the open. Why? Because we had that God-given privilege. It was our right. It was our control. It was our power. But the niggas always had to stay in the closet. How ironic. The dark is in a place where it's dark. Ah, Brett Butler, yeah? 
that's that is exactly the opposite of the truth. What you just really? said. Yeah. How? Because white people hit it completely. That's why you had shows on television like the Brady Bunch, My, My Three Sons, Father Knows Best. That was all bullshit. They hid the the dad had come back from the war and he was an alcoholic and he beat his kids. That's what they were hiding. But uh, black folks, because they were on the Chitlin secret a circuit and they weren't ever going to get shit, 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 shit. That is better to say than that. Chitlin, Chitlin secret. secret. That might and actually not be, be bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah, but because the, because they weren't go, they weren't worried about getting a television program, they were free to do more openly because it wasn't going to kill. That's that's the thing about uh, you know uh, who talks about this in the. There's a joke that's um, they made a movie about one joke. Um, I don't even remember what it was, but what it is, it's just a joke, and it was really done by white comics, and uh, and I think it is. Uh, trying to remember which comic talks about it but because they were because black comics were mainly limited to the like a chitlin circuit or uh, a different kind of venues they didn't have that because they could cuss openly they could say what the, what they wanted to they could speak and express themselves in a different way because it wasn't affecting them the same way that it would affect a white comic um and and that was kind of the point of this joke white comics did it because it was their fun way of saying being naughty where a black comic was already saying what they wanted to say. They didn't need the structure of a naughty joke to do it. So I, I think it's opposite of what uh, Brett Butler just said. I, I think. That- well, let me correct myself, Andy. You're right and I'm wrong. And the only reason why I'm going to take your criticism and your correction is because you're white. Wink, wink. <laughs> if you were a Negro and corrected me, there would be an awkward silence of pause for 15 seconds. And the next thing you know, your black ass would be hanging from a light pole like a Christmas tree ornament. <laughs> ah, Brett Butler, yeah? <laughs> Um, you know, it, it's funny. Like when we went to the rock and roll, rock and roll, God damn, we are just fucking huh, between Chitlin secret and rock and roll. Oh my God. We've got fraggle rock in our mouth. Um, at the Chitlin secret, you can see the rock and roll. There you go. Uh, uh, when we went to the rock and roll hall, hall of fame, fame in Cleveland, Cleveland, actually a very exciting thing to yes, do. Yes, it was. I don't know that I need to do it again. No, but it like was- I, we will Ali, but, but. But it is because it was in Cleveland. It was very exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, they they uh they brought, they mentioned these uh black musicians uh that were influences to uh Little Richard. Uh God, please, wait, I don't have a whole lot of notes. Why am I not seeing this? They they mentioned these influences to, that were influences of his. Brother Joe May. Clara Ward sisters and Marion Williams. You could see where he got the influence. You could see where, where these, these powerfully strong vocal artists were amazing, but they don't get the just do or even the mention. Like you, it's a shame that you don't know about these people unless you watch something like this when these people should clearly be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, yeah. like the fact that we got to dig through uh, the crates. Are they are they in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame though? Do we know? No, I don't think they are. I don't. I don't know. I, 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 we went. I, I no, they don't record. They don't. Re- you know. Listen, it's not. But this was also influences. This isn't rock and roll though. This is also this is but, precursor but, but blues, to rock and roll. though. Yeah. Whether, whether it's blues or gospel, that is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They put it in because to show some influence, but that isn't what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is for. Rock. That's why it's called. But rock my, and roll. my 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 point though, if I'm being if we're being cutting through the bullshit, yeah, because they allude to this in in this documentary is, you know, black artists aren't given the same respect uh, that white artists were given. They they were treated like second class citizens. A lot of them. Um, which is, which I don't think is a leap to say, this is why you don't hear of them. Because they're not treated with the same, you know, the same prestige as a lot of white artists. And I think that's a goddamn travesty. Well, I, th- I think there's a multiple parts to that, though. You just said you don't know, you, you, had you heard of them? No. Okay, let me, let me. Uh, all I'm saying is, I'm saying, all I'm saying is, they should be just as easy a find as the, a, a, on the same level as white artists. And I know a lot of them aren't. I know they aren't. No, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with that. I, I think, though, in history, the people who are influences and innovators 
are not always the first person that you find. You find the famous people. The famous people are the people that uh, lead lead the way, and those are the people that we remember. As we look back at sports, I mean, we couldn't tell you who the uh, innovators of, the, of football are, the people who had, even as we go back in history, we, we tend, even, okay, right now, well, we're talking about uh, basketball. And w- the new generation is completely shitting on the old generation of basketball. And what do they say about a lot of these players? They couldn't play today. They couldn't play the game the same way. Uh, and I'm not talking, about, let's make this not even about, uh, don't put race into it. Just that, that older generation says they can't play. They can't keep up. We tend to replace with the people that is current with the people that are younger and, and move those people back. I'm not saying that's the situation in this because if it's a rock and roll hall of fame, if it's something that's history, it should be written. It should be recorded because history is, that's what it is. And, and they should get some more due, but we tend as a, as uh, to be very uh, temporary in how we, uh, how we honor things, uh, how we remember history. Uh, we, we tend to go and replace people with new people. Okay, I, I know what you're saying, and I don't think either us, of us are disagreeing. No, I don't think we are at all. But, but I just want to be sure, because it that we're clear here, because it sounds like you're saying it's more to do with that than the racial element. No, I think no, that's no. part of it. But the racial element is definitely a huge piece. The racial element's a huge piece because, and this is where, you know, listen, I'm going to jump out of order here a little bit, this, but then when we... When, uh, and there's always these parts in the in, in these shows when they go, Elvis wasn't the one. Elvis wasn't. Uh, everybody knows. I think I think most people should know Elvis wasn't the first one. He well, didn't create. But rock you and always roll. know this is the thing where you go, most people, and most people ain't you. No, no, most people don't. Most I, people I, won't I, get I, credit. I think that most people understand that Elvis wasn't the uh, inventor of rock and roll. Elvis says, uh, but he's the guy that is the face of it. He's the face of it because he was the most popular because he was selling to an audience that was predominantly white, but it was the larger purchasing audience. And this is a business and that's what they went for. But, but that's not by coincidence. No, but if you're in business, you're going to sell to, you're looking for the most amount of purchases. And that's really how, how this happened. And, and let's be really honest, let's take the racism a little deeper. Rock and roll doesn't break out without Elvis because that was going to be a black music thing. And they were going to fight it. You saw them fighting. Okay. You saw okay. them fighting the music coming okay. up because. But just so we're clear and you're right, but just so you're clear. I want to be careful here because when it make when when you say it like it's you know well it's a business and Elvis was able to do this. Remember in this, like in so many examples of entertainment, white folks don't give us the opportunities to do what we do. But when they do give it to us, we do just as good, if not better. Better, okay. But th- that's there's that's- a reason why Ray Charles said. Listen, I'm not impressed with Elvis. There's a reason why Little Richard is to some degree going Elvis Smelvis because they all know. Nigga, you're taking what we did and you're not even doing it as good as us, but you're getting the play that you're getting because you got the complexion for the protection, to, for the collection, for the connection. No doubt. A la Paul Mooney. That's there's no denying any All of right. what you just said. All right. But when you but when you say that, that also opened up the door so that other people's music could get heard that was that was lacking. And when we say this, and this is what's important, it was already being heard, but it was being heard by a selective smaller group of people, black and progressive white kids. And that's what, and I like what they talked about this. And this is even more towards what we're saying. They said it was teenagers and there wasn't really teenagers. Teenagers wasn't created until rock and roll music because teenagers made rock and roll, which is interesting because look at how hip hop developed it. it, it, Hip hop is very similar in the aspect that the older people are going, this is a fad. It's not going to stay. It's going away. Teenagers, younger people. And then white kids buy more of it. than Yeah. So this is it, it, we, 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 you watch the same thing happen again, but this time black people were able to get control and own and be a bigger part of what was going on, even though a lot of people still got fucked over in the deals in the early the, in the beginning. But then people got hung out the windows until it got fixed. So let's so uh, but going back to that, um, I, I forgot what the general point was that we're even doing what right now what we're talking about. No, no, about uh, rock and roll hall of fame. Who's in? Who's, who's not? out? Who's out? And why? Why it's affected right. that way? But they. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I I wrote down a few a few. Uh, Ros- uh, Rosetta Thorpe. Uh, she she's she was in the rock and roll hall of fame. Most people, if you ask about her, no one knows who she is, and she is in the rock and roll hall of fame. So that that's in there. And when they say uh, 
and, and I know that he is, the, and I really like the term architect for rock and roll because here's the thing, uh, before we jump into this to me, there's all these people. We could go Elvis, Chuck Berry, Fats Domino. You could go, uh, you could go Bo Diddley. You could go James Brown. You could go all those people. But just take a look at them again. Who, like rock and roll, the development, the architect, who looked more like the future of what rock and roll became than Little Richard? No one. He looked like Prince before Prince. Right. So he, when you say architect of rock and roll, you, you know, you could give Elvis, you could say when, when they're, when we talk about King and they keep naming King and people go, he wasn't the first first has nothing to do with King. It's so it's sales because Michael Jackson didn't invent pop music, but he's the King of pop music. It's, it's sales. So when we talk about going and, and when I look at little Richard architect, he laid out the plan more than anyone else ever I can I can imagine in rock and roll at that time how how different Chuck Berry who played and who's amazing the amazing guitar that that I think is the foundation one of the foundations for rock and roll but he doesn't look like little Richard he doesn't have the same uh the, the, the performer mannerisms on stage uh, yeah he did the little thing with his little duck walk across the stage and yeah it was in but that wasn't next level that wasn't going into what, what rock and roll is going to Little Richard is current today in today's standard. Little Richard could go, if you could project him as a younger man on stage, he's current to today. That's what's so amazing about him. This is what, what, why I think the underappreciation comes in is because he was so far ahead of what everybody else was doing. Absolutely. So that that's, it's a different, it's a different and, realm and, to and, me. and everybody, it, it, you know, basically copied from him in so many ways. From style to fashion, you know, they copied from him. Um, you know, he even said at one point, uh, or, or what well, the question was asked, I guess. Well, Billy Porter went, sorry, y'all, it wasn't Elvis. If Lil Richard was white, he would have been bigger. Not if he was gay. Well, again, that's what he had working he, he against him. Gets him. Yeah, he too. did. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you can't sing uh, Tutti Frutti, Which Good I, Booty. Which I didn't even know was a gay song. Yeah. I didn't know that till I saw this. And when he was on a talk show with, I guess, Brennan, one of the guys, he was, yeah, Luda, the original, the, the lyrics were Tutti Frutti in the booty. You know, yeah, you never heard anybody say this little Tutti Frutti? No. You you didn't know what she, re, she really likes the ball. You knew what that was, though. No. Right? Balls? But no, I really likes the ball. Ball, fucking. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I, his the way he wrote ori the, the original right. lyric, I'm sure were deeper than that. Right. So yeah. Wow. Um, dude, let me tell you something. Uh, Pat Boone <laughs> should be if he was alive today. I don't give a fuck if he was 90. Should be arrested and put in jail for the rest of his whatever life he had left. People for love him. fucking. Ruining. Oh my God. His version of good golly, Miss Molly. He is the, the purest personification of soulless white people. Especially when you try to take on a guy like Little Richard. I like how they said Little Richard made fun and said he couldn't even his vocally, his mouth, lips couldn't keep up with couldn't that. keep up with what the lyrics were and the tempo of the song. He did it purposely so that they couldn't do it is what he said. Oh God. Uh, Pat Boone and I, we've said, I've brought him up on the podcast before. That's the, un this is why I still, and I know people fight with me about this. Elvis came up on work, playing on Bill, Bill street. I can't even say it right. Bill street. Yeah. And he came up with everybody, all the black artists at the time. He, that was part of who he was. Pat Boone was just a way to take that music, repackage it, and sell it. That's all it was. Oh, so that, God. that that's that that's why I have I, I get that's why I defend Elvis a little bit the way that I do. But because that's we're comparing and when and this is why. Because when you hear people say, Yeah, Elvis stole this, he did this. No, Pat Boone stole it. And he didn't steal it. He he was produced for it. 
uh, record companies stole it and put it on Pat Boone and let them send that out into America. That's the stolen music. Listen, first of all, let me, this is where I, I and, and, and listen, I want to be clear. And we talked about this when we talked about the Elvis movie. I, I, I as, as in terms of an, an artist looking at another artist in terms of their performance, their ability, there's no denying Elvis was a bad motherfucker. He was the legit white boy who, there's a common thread here. We just talked about it. Winning time. Bird played with the black dudes who worked at the hotel. Eminem surrounded himself and came up with black influences. Uh, my man from the M1 mixtapes, the white boy, the professor, plays with niggas. So, and Elvis always gave credit. He said to Little Richard, he said to Fats Domino, you're the real kings of rock and roll. Now, what the media wants to do with it, of course, give it to the white boy. But y'all are giving it to the white boy because that's what y'all want to go. The greatest to ever do this genre of music is a white guy. He's the face. But Elvis is telling you, nah, I'm not the king of rock no. and roll. So the fact that Elvis is giving the credit where he knows it really is due is even more of a reason why I tip my hat to him. Besides his God-given talent and ability, he, he, he gave it up. But Pat Boone is the one that's the, when you, when you talk about the appropriation, oh, of, goodness. That, that's where it is. But you know what? Today, people don't even know about Pat Boone because when you went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, did you see Pat Boone anywhere? I wasn't looking. No, but he was <laughs> <laughs> I don't go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame looking for Pat, Pat Boone, Boone, nigga. Uh, but, but I mean, it's it's a forgotten part because that's it's it's one of those things that people need to forget about. Um, I love it. Just a great quote because uh, they talked about the fact that uh, Little Richard's confidence was just through the roof. You couldn't tell him he wasn't the shit. And the one guy go, he goes on the talk show. I'm not conceited, honey. I'm convinced. I love that. Oh, that's a great fucking line. But okay, now. Is that is that the the, the yes, yes? That's what it is. A little bit. Yeah, because, and I love it though. But no, no, because no, the it, boisterous part of, of the gay community is some of the best parts. That I wish more 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 people had that. I wish I had that. But what I love is that you got that from a guy who was nothing at all gay, Muhammad Ali. You're right. The quotes, the bravado, yeah. the confidence, and he was all man. Yeah, but. A little Richard going, and I love when they said that he could just look at people and go, shut up. Shut up. And then, he made that famous. <laughs> yeah. Certain gay isms are hilarious, man. They're hilarious. Um, I'm on a, let me, let me. You know, I thought it was funny. And I always loved that quote by Jay Z. When you first come in the game and try to play you, drop a couple of hits, look how they wave to you. Little Richard's dad threw him out the fucking house, wanted to basically disown him because he was gay. Then his son drops a hit album, welcomes him back into the house with open arms. Yeah. Jesus, dude. Dude, but Little Richard's dead. That's a good looking dude, though. Didn't yeah. Dude. Yeah. I saw. And For that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the time period. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's. A, and then so his family, I don't know what his whole family looks like. Right. But Little Richard was a good looking man. I mean, he he was a, a good lot of makeup, a lot of hair. The yeah, but door, that, the that was a little bit. That was right. a, that, that was different. But right. Uh, no, he had what he, like he said, those women, the white women were all over him. You know, this is what's so awesome about music and comedy. It is the official thing that breaks barriers down racially. It's the thing that you, because we, we all, music is an energy. It's, it's the soundtrack to our lives. We do so many things to it. It moves us. It motivates us. It, it inspires us. And comedy, we all love to laugh. It's guttural. When you are good at either of those art forms, it's amazing the power that has to, to put race away. To see those white kids, and they said they would fucking, they, they were supposed to be segregated. The white kids would come out from where they were separate from the blacks and join in. Actually, before they even started talking about that, there's a picture. Uh, it's like about 30 seconds before they go into this. And I noticed in one of the pictures, it, it's it's such a mix of people on the floor, right? All like screaming and 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 it, it is amazing, and that is a good. That's a really great point. Right. It, it it defies race. Yeah. Um. Hey, uh, 
Be- before we go too far, though, because I uh-huh. just want to say this. When they're talking about the people who really, you know, Little Richard being the one, and that, like I talk about it, is right. like the architect because of what I see him as the future. But Ike Turner had that first song that he wrote. They, they give him credit for being one of the original uh, originators of rock and roll on that first album. <laughs> right. And I just thought that was because, you know, when, you, when we're talking about this, and this is what's important to me to say, when we're talking about this, and you're saying Richard, Little Richard doesn't get credit. Who talks about Ike Turner? And who talks about his place in music? Uh, other than he beat his his wife. Yeah, that kind of eclipses. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But, I'm a, but what I'm saying is yeah. if, you, if, you're, if you're someone who, that, that album that he did, right. they, they credit that for being the first rock album, for being the album that right. introduces rock. Nothing. And he wrote the song. He wrote, he's the writer of the song. Right. Plays the piano on the song. Yeah. Nothing. But so what I'm saying is our, the history the history just seems to fade away depending on how you want it, how much video is, how likable you are and where we are in time. Because someone like that, how is that not recognized at all? Even if he is the person that he, you know, he was, how do you not say, yeah, but this, I, you know, besides beating on his wife, he used to beat a mean piano, you know, uh, (laughs) when you're socking bitches. <laughs> but I'm just saying this we 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 rewrite it by the people that we like or how how they how they feel. Ronald Williams has just entered the chat. <laughs> hey Ronald, how's it going? All right. Um dude, I listen, I, I thought uh uh little Richard was all homosexual. Apparently he was bisexual. Yeah. He messed with women. I didn't know he messed with women. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just Yeah. I mean, you, you go, yeah. Like that's uh, maybe you, maybe because you're older and maybe you just have more knowledge, but th- these are things I did not know. Okay. Here, here's the thing. I think that is a little different for me and you, Well, not really. Cause your mom was in music though. My mom is only 20, like 19 years older than me. She had, right. she had but at 20, she had, she got pregnant when she was 19, had me when she was 20. Um, she was into rock and roll. I had all those. Re- I had all those records in my house. I had everything. I had everything from early rock at my house, and my mom was into that. So, like, I knew a lot about all these artists at that right. time. So, it's not. Uh, uh, it's not foreign to me into the stories. And then you know, you're growing up, and then you're you know, you just see different things. And I talked to her. She had magazines. Like, she had all the magazines from that time. So, I had a lot of uh, entry into rock and roll, especially the early stuff. And um, Plus, you know, when I was growing up, they, you know, when you're, when you're gay at that time, they tried to photograph you with women to make you a little bit more to make it uh, sellable. Right. So, um, but my, my mom has several stories of, of things that has happened and all these rock and roll guys. Uh, it's funny because that girl that he is, uh, does have a relationship with his whole life. She met her at 16. Right. My mom, this, this uh, you know, I'm. She fucked Little Richard at 16? No, she didn't fuck oh. Little Richard. Chuck Berry tried to take my mom home. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It's almost the same thing. Yeah, at, at, at a roller rink in, uh, in, really? in in Tucson. He was playing at a roller rink in Tucson, and my mom said, no, she she had to go back home. Her mom was waiting for her, and he, Chuck was hot after my mom. Really? Yeah. Damn. So, yeah, these, these stories are, this is early rock and roll, and, you know, it's a little crazy, and this is what's happening. Um, but he's, but clearly right to the visual eye and to what you're hearing, he was more gay than by like more towards leaning towards the you, men and the women. Okay. Clearly. Let, let, let me say this then, because I think this would be, uh, uh, relevant to this conversation and how we're having it today. I think you could have more of an opportunity of being bisexual than then, because even today, when you say, if you take a dick as a guy, you're gay. Yeah. You could, you could still fuck girls, but you're gay. Right. Back then, if you if you fucked a dude, you were all in. There, there was no like there was no like middle ground on that. I don't right. think that there was an opening to go. Yeah, but I like girls too. Well, nah, you you you're gay. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Because there was the, 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 there's no open uh, conversation. There's no context for it. There's right. the 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 clubs that you're talking about. They were hidden from the police because the police would go and raid them and arrest all of them. Uh, so no, I, I think you, you were all in at that time. You, you didn't have really the option. Now, if you're famous and you could do what he did and he wanted, you know, so a woman, maybe he could, then he can pull that off. But I don't, I don't think that that was the, uh, the norm back then. Right. Um, 
really my only my my last note is and this is where I you know uh, maybe I'm feeling different now because some time has elapsed and I'm not as hot about it. But when I was watching it, you know, just hearing the black artists talk about how dirty the industry did them and how they treated them like second class citizens and how once they basically got what they needed from them in terms of thank you for your creation and or your contribution to this art form that we are now going to totally steal from you and not give you shit. And it's like between that and when uh, Little Richard went overseas to, to Britain and did a concert and then towards the end of the concert, the riot broke out, the fucking, the, all the white kids started destroying the place and throwing shit. Not because they did anything bad, Little Richard or the bands, just because they just went wild. And I just went, and, and, and let me say, again, I always preface it this because I know how <laughs> motherfuckers get. Not all white people. I love white people. To our white listeners, I love you. But it just sometimes, as a black person, listening to this and watching this, I just go, why is it that white people historically, and it just seems in your DNA, y'all are some barbaric, destructive Evil, at times, just violent motherfuckers, man. Just some hateful, destructive people. I don't get it. What is it about you guys? That not all of you, but God damn it, the history. I'm not making this shit up. It's just, it's documented. It's footage. It's in the books. It's historical. Y'all are just wild, barbaric, out of control. Woodstock, this shit. Stealing niggas' music, taking it for your own, don't give credit, fuck over the artists like they ain't shit. Jesus, man. Dude, the fucking over the artist is... is and to, before you yeah. say that, and to the black guy, again, who you think, oh, I hate my people, I put down my people. What I just did, I've been doing on this podcast since episode one. Believe me, I shit on everybody, but white people got a lot of more of my caca on them than anybody. <laughs> okay. That's the nature of that business, though, especially back then. They fucked over everybody. Everybody got fucked I over. I know everybody, but come on, you know, come on, everybody, but we always treated a different kind of special like shit. Everybody got fucked over. Oh, uh, Andy, but, don't but just no, no, do that. Let me, let me say that. Let me say it. Let me finish it. Everybody got fucked over unless you were the face where they couldn't fuck you over. People, uh, people meaning white. Yeah. So yeah. how does that still tie into everybody getting fucked well, over? I mean, if they could fuck you over, the business was made to fuck you over. That that's how the business was made. Even 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 the black business owners fucked over their black artists. That was the nature of the business. I'm not agreeing with it. I'm saying this is an evil, dirty business. I get, I get you. I, I, I get you. Then. It's the nature of the business. Period. But come on, man. It just seems like we got a special place well, in the shit house. Okay, then let's say that this way. Little Richard said it. I was just so happy to get a contract with my name on it. I didn't even read the uh, read what was underneath it. So you saying in a way he fucked himself? If you have an evil business and you're not okay, even if even if we give you that, it still doesn't change a lot of what him, Bo Diddley, and so many of the other black artists in this said, which is yo. Once, and this is why I jokingly always go when I refer to the movie Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Man, we can't teach the Kwai Lo. Because when, 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 when the Kwai Lo learn from us, uh, study us, and take from us, then they get the credit. Maybe not to their, you know, they're, they're the one doing it, the, the business. But they get the credit. They get more of the money. We get fucked. We're left out to dry. The record companies no longer need us. Because look, we got our own who do what you do. Yeah, but that was Pat Boone. Uh, well, it, it extends way beyond Pat Boone. No, it does. But I've been saying you can't keep doing that forever. Uh, no, but that, that was the, the evilness of, of the business. Uh, and, and the evilness of some white dude, folks. It, you could say that, but like someone wrote to me and said, what about this? And I was like, that dude wasn't even white, dude. He was, he, he was, uh, I'm trying to remember what the guy. You the black guy. No, one guy was, one guy was, uh, uh, they, they, a lot of there's a lot of immigrants that came into the music business because you could make money in it. So it wasn't just like white dudes. Again, I, I keep saying white tigers exist. White gorillas exist. We know this. 
There's always an exception to the rule, but the rule, the majority of the rule ain't the albinos. Well, here's the majority of the rule. The rule is if you can fuck someone over, do it, or else why does Motown, why did they fuck over their artist? It was a black owner. Why did he fuck over his black artist? I think artist? they did more for their black artists than fuck them over, though. In hindsight. In hindsight, but that wasn't, you know, Barry had to change the way his working model was. This The business was built that way, and everybody took advantage of it. I'm, I'm not saying that black people, listen, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again because black people are going, oh, are you going to write in this? You take everything I say. And at the end, add racism to it. Yes, racism is always a fact. If you if we're making it an algebra equation, X is racism, and it's always in there. Okay, but when you say, let me just challenge that for a second. When you say that and go take everything I say and just add and racism, it's, to it. it's almost like the main ingredient is everything else, and then racism is the sprinkle. No. Where for me, I think the main ingredient is racism, and then you sprinkle everything on okay, top of that. I'll try it differently. Uh, we play we play all games on a field. Racism is the field. Okay. How's that? That works and you better got, for you me. You got to navigate yourself that through that. works better for okay, me. Okay, how's that? So right. that's it. And I always see it that way. Because when you go uh, uh, blah, 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 and then add a little bit, that's like add a pinch of salt. No, not add, add a pinch yeah. of racism. It's much bigger than a pinch. Okay, it's the field, and you have to navigate that field. Everybody has to navigate that field, but your field even has more problems on it, and then you have to get through it. And that's why I'm saying you have to read your contract. You had to get – when he's coming back with that flight, flame flight, they're talking he has $30,000 because they say he didn't have a lawyer, he doesn't have any management. Well, isn't that him maybe trying to avoid the fucking of the business? And, well, but you have to have a lawyer. You have to have someone that's that you can trust. That, and this is the hard part. Who do you trust? And let, now, now. Let's who do I it. trust? No one. That's who. I trust me. Who put this thing together? Me. That's who. Fucking better. I'm sorry. No, but the, but the other part of it is what you said. Now, now let's put now let's bring Gabe and put it, put this in this as well. Yeah. So now you're black, which you have that making it harder for you because of the the, the nature of, of of business in this in, in, in the, especially early in this business, this country. And now you're gay. Now you put a whole nother. In. So now as a black gay man in uh, the entertainment business, you're trying to find someone that you can trust. That it's not an easy, I'm not saying it's easy, but right. people who are successful have been able to navigate the field. And there are people that have been successful. What, what is the navigation? I'm not, I'm not saying I know what that is. I couldn't navigate it. I, I've, I've said on this, I, I've said here many times, I don't think that I would ever be a, an ultra successful person because I can't navigate that kind of shit. I, I, I'm not that person. You need people that can do it for you though. And, and if you don't have that, if you don't build that company that, and I, what I mean by company is your uh, tight circle that gets you through shit, you don't make it. Right. And okay. So talent is, and you know this better than anyone else, and people listen to this, talent only gets you in the door. But on the other, there's a bunch of doors, and you got to go through the next door. You're just in the waiting room when you get in with talent. No. Hard work beats talent if talent don't work hard. Yeah. But I don't know that that applies to what we're talking, what you're saying. It, but, but it, it, but it yeah. does. It, it's, there's a talent to even doing business. So I'm, what I'm saying is talent gets you into the waiting room. But you got to wait, just like in any other thing, you got to wait and you got to try to figure out and, and how to navigate that next room. This is, this, nothing in life is easy, but we, we continue to make it hard. Right. I have the perfect name for this episode. What's the perfect name? You ready? Yep. Uh, what you doing? Writing something down? I'm writing it down. Okay. I, I, no, no, here's what I want you to do. Don't write it down. I want you to hear it first. Okay. And if it's good like I think it is, it should motivate you to grab that pencil and write it down. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Put your tootie in my fruity. <laughs> That's terrible, but yes. What? It's terrible, but Why yes. is that terrible? No, terribly good, but terrible. Oh, oh you know, okay, okay. You know Concomic I mean? good. Yes. But okay. Why bamboo ba ba la bamboo? Shut up. I remember when I had one gay experience in Montgomery. Oh, you just lost half of your audience right now. I told him I'm not going to go down on you. He said, Dr. King, what would you like me to do? I said, I want you to put your tootie in my fruity. I'm going to. Oh, you're going to slide away on it? I'm going to slide, I'm slide with, with you. you. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it, man. That's a Check show. Check it out, y'all. It's oh, on oh, Amazon yeah. Prime. Uh, it's going to be on CNN. It's on HBO Max. 
Little Richard. Tell me if I'm wrong. When I, the moment this came on, within seconds, I thought to myself, Little Richard is Paul Mooney if Paul Mooney was gay. No? Maybe. You don't see a little bit of Paul I, I do. In- I, I do see it a little bit, but what, what means, what makes you think Paul wasn't a little gay? He, ah, <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Maybe uh, someone put their tootie in Paul's fruity. <laughs> Listen, uh, we, he said he sucked Richard Pryor's dick. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to this here. Uh, there was something I was gonna say, and then I <laughs> oh, his name was Little Richard. Now a lot of people call their dick Little whatever their name is. Right. So if you're already Little Richard, what do you? And which means Little Dick, right? Because Dick is the is the short for, for Richard. Richard. Yeah. So what would you call your dick if your name was already Little? Mm. You can't say Richard Dick. Yeah, but you can. But if you're calling your girl, take out my little, take take out little Richard. Little Richard. If little I tell Richard. my girl take my dick out, I'm not saying nothing little. I'm gonna <laughs> take out my fat Michael, or something. <laughs> so okay, all right. Uh, here's where we're gonna be, you guys. <laughs> this show, this one went off the rails really quick. Actually, uh, we are. Where are we? Okay. Uh, oh, we don't know where we're going to be. So I'm going to go up a few. Let's, let's say I'm going to, we don't know what week we're actually doing this. And so we're going to start here. September 7th, we're going to be at the Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. September 15th through the 17th, we're going to be at Louisville Comedy Club. September 29th through the 30th, Kansas City Improv. October 6th through the 7th, Hartford Funny Bone. October 13th through the 15th, Orlando Improv. October 19th through the 22nd, we're going to be at the Chicago Improv. October 26th through the 29th, Milwaukee Improv. November 3rd through the 5th, Levity Live. Uh, that is in West Nyack, New York. Uh, November 10th through the 12th, we'll be at the Tampa Improv. November 16th through the 19th, or Ontario, California Improv. I'm so happy to go back there. November 24th to the 26th, we'll be up in San Jose Improv. December 1st through the 3rd, Tacoma Comedy Club in Tacoma, Washington. December 7th through the 10th, we're going to be at Magoobies back in the Baltimore area. December 15th through the 17th, we're going to be at Summit in Fort Wayne, Indiana. December 21st through the 23rd, Bricktown Comedy Club, Oklahoma City. And December 28th through the 30th, back in D.C., Washington, D.C. at the Improv. There it be. Uh, That's a show. Tutti Frutti. Oh, Rudy! Woo! That's perfect. Right. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer, Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.